Came home the same day cause flight was delayed and found wife sleeping with AP in my own bed. Now she cries like a goat cause I told her we're done and left. My girlfriend and I have known each other for 7 years. We've been going out for the past 5 and living together for maybe 18 months. I flew a few states away for work and have been gone for the past week. My flight was delayed because of the weather and I told her I would just stay the night. But on impulse, I decided to catch the red eye and then drive back through the morning. I figured it'd be a nice surprise. I pulled up and noticed another car in the driveway. It didn't really sink in, I just thought it was odd for how early it was. I come home late pretty often, so I'm good at getting in quietly. Walked in, unpacked my dirty clothes and put them in the hamper, then went to the bedroom. They were both in bed, only partly covered by the sheets. I didn't recognize the other guy immediately. They were both asleep, and I don't know how long I stood there. It didn't compute. After I recognized the guy in bed with her, I had one of those moments. Just a red second where I imagined picking up something really heavy and smashing his face. But it passed pretty quickly. I was just really tired and a little sad. I woke her up and told her I was going to a hotel. I think she was too sleep groggy to get it at first, she was smiling for a little bit before remembering. She got up and was starting to talk and cry but I just turned her out. I grabbed some spare clothes and got out. I turned off my phone before I left the driveway. I just don't know what to do right now. I feel like I've been in a car accident. Just sitting here in this crappy hotel room drinking some crappy whiskey I got at the supermarket on the way over. I've got my laptop, my phone, a change of work clothes, and that's about it. I don't want to feel this way anymore. I don't want to be anymore. Update. Read the email she sent me. Finished reading it. Cried for a bit because she was pretty blunt about it. It wasn't the first time they'd slept together, and she didn't try and say there were extenuating circumstances or anything. I wasn't drunk or stoned. He didn't coerce me. I was flattered when he hit on me. He's a very attractive man that could probably sleep with lots of women. So for him to choose me was very special. It was a chance to satiate my enormous ego. She said that she'd understand if I wanted her out of the house and out of my life. She thanked me for not calling her a call girl or a girl or etc. even though I am. She said that I didn't have to stay in a hotel, that she'd be out of the house in the morning and that she'd leave her keys there. Then she apologized for destroying your trust in me and betraying everything we had. If I never want to talk to her again, she said that I don't have to. I can't do anything that would account for what I've done. No apology is enough. I was selfish and arrogant and deceitful for no other reason than I wanted to be. As much as I want it, I don't deserve your forgiveness. I can only still ask because I'm a hypocrite. I'm sorry. Just reading this is making me cry again. I'm glad she didn't try to justify what she did. But I'm still lost. Update. I've been back home for a few hours. I made myself a grilled cheese with onions and watched some cosmos. I almost wish I'd been called into work, it'd be easier to keep my mind off things. As it is, it's been very hard to resist the urge to call her. I don't know how I'm supposed to settle things either way without contacting her at some point. In the meantime, I've gotten a few phone messages. A few were from her family, who I'm on very good terms with. I guess at some point yesterday she told them that she'd cheated. Her sister let me know that she'd be staying at her place in a spare bedroom. And her dad texted me an apology, saying that he thought he'd raised her better. No messages from her, which I was kind of relieved about. If I heard her voice, I'd be tempted to call. I very nearly blew my top when I saw I'd gotten a text from her co-worker. Sorry dude I didn't know. Maybe he did, maybe he didn't. I don't really care as long as I never see him again. I've gotten a lot of advice and support from people, which I really appreciate. A few think I'm some kind of a-hole for not immediately throwing her out. I don't agree, but whatever. 
However, I also received a few really disturbing and virulent messages suggesting I should have taken it much further than that. If I'm a beta because I didn't send someone to the hospital, then call me a beta. I'm not out to please people like you, and my heart pumps piss for that kind of misogynistic bullcrap. Anyway from the advice I've gotten, it seems like a protracted separation would be the best way to determine how I feel. I don't regret the last five years, even given what's happened. But I need some perspective, and I'm not the type to rush into anything. So I won't be tossing all of her belongings in the trash. What I could use some help with is figuring out the time frame. How long should I wait? There has to be a discussion at some point. Update. Puked and stopped drinking. So I guess I'm doing better than I was an hour ago. Part of me wants to just pass out and go offline for a while. But I have to keep online a while longer for work, if we get a call from the vendor our client is dealing with, I'm the guy that'll get tapped to go on site. Theoretically, I should have the next couple days off, but no guarantees. I'm not trying to make excuses for her. Or for me. I just, well crap. I did get a message, but not from work. I guess she knew I'd still be checking my work email. I don't know if I should just delete it, or if I should read it, or ignore it. If I'm contemplating the end of our relationship, should I see what she has to say for herself? I know I can't respond to her tonight. But should I read this? Now let's listen to some comments on this part from our Reddit listeners. Comment 1. Damn dude. The worst thing is that it sounds like she's actually pretty level-headed. This is weird. Not your typical Reddit, I caught her cheating post emo. Most make excuses and try to blame it on the so or whoever they cheated with or something. I don't think you should do anything right now. I think you've exhausted yourself emotionally already and should just hit the hay, deal with the crap storm tomorrow. Get some sleep. Comment 2. Take it one day at a time. Such a long relationship will not be easy to get over with. But I promise that if you cut her out of your life, make new friends, get new hobbies, and keep going you will be a crap load better in six months. Sulking in your house isn't how you get over someone. Going out and living life as best as possible is how you get over someone. This relationship is over, there is nothing you can do about that. But you can set yourself on a path to be happier in six months. OP reply. I've queued up aliens and been drinking straight whiskey for the past hour, so excuse me if I start to sound disjointed. Our accounts are all separate, which was her idea. The apartment is in my name, I've been living there a while. She basically pays rent. I can't even begin to think how I could do some of this though. She isn't just my girlfriend, she's my best friend, probably my biggest advocate and fan. She's the one who pushed me to go for the career I'm in now. Helped me study in school, helped me with applications. Be more informed because of her, more rounded. We're like family. Then why did she cheat on you? I don't know. We found out recently that I have a very below very average sperm count. Not sterile, but worrisome. She was more upset about it than I was, even though I probably like the idea of kids more. I know that is not an excuse but otherwise I don't know of any other reasons. Update. I've queued up aliens and been drinking straight whiskey for the past hour, so excuse me if I start to sound disjointed. Our accounts are all separate, which was her idea. The apartment is in my name, I've been living there a while. She basically pays rent. I can't even begin to think how I could do some of this though. She isn't just my girlfriend, she's my best friend, probably my biggest advocate and fan. She's the one who pushed me to go for the career I'm in now. Helped me study in school, helped me with applications. Be more informed because of her, more rounded. We're like family. Then why did she cheat on you? I don't know. We found out recently that I have a very below very average sperm count. Not sterile, but worrisome. She was more upset about it than I was, even though I probably like the idea of kids more. I know that is not an excuse. But otherwise I don't know of any other reasons. Update. I've taken some of the advice a lot of you good folks gave me, 
and looked into a few projects to occupy myself with. Changing my living space seems to be a big theme, and rearranging just a few things in the apartment has already made me feel a little better. After talking to the landlord, I also went out and bought a few paint supplies. No murals are planned, but the little splash of blue I slapped over the yellow beige of one wall has lifted my spirits a bit. Working out seems to be a little less intuitive. I've never been in terrible shape due to good metabolism, a halfway active lifestyle, and eating habits that are at least better than abysmal. So I'm not quite going from couch to 60, but it's pretty close, because I never had any formal training slash instruction for either exercising or dieting. I'm thinking that just getting on a stationary bike for 30 minutes a few times a week might be a good start. But any real advice on what to start with would be appreciated. I might use the vacation time I've accrued to travel somewhere. It feels like a temporary change of scenery may help me get my head on straight too. Update Well, this was a ducking terrible day. I've been trying so goddamn hard to keep my crap together. I had plans, things to do. Got up for work, my first day back since what happened. I was looking forward to losing myself in the minutiae. So of course I get in a car accident on the way to work. Of ducking course. All the progress I made is gone in the crapper. I can't remember the accident itself, but I was told I wasn't the one at fault at least. I've got whiplash, a concussion, and my left eye is swollen shut. Add bruises all over, and you get the idea. The doctor wants me to have a CT and MRI done in the morning, so I have to spend the night. I called my folks and told them I'm fine because I don't want them driving four hours just for this. I also let a few co-worker buds know what happened, and they promised to cover for me till I can get back. In the meantime, I'm stuck in this bed staring at my smartphone. It's impossible for me to relax. My left hand has had what feels like the world's largest four in it since I got here. At one point I was watching the bag empty, counting the milliliters on the pump display down to zero. I thought that if I could just get that off, just have the hand free. I'd be a little bit more comfortable. I could maybe sleep. Then the nurse made her rounds and replaced the near-empty bag with a new one. I almost cried. Then Laura came. And it's like someone twisted my brain. I wanted her here more than anything, and at the same time I felt like throwing up. All I could do was look at her. She tried very hard to say something but started crying before she could get much out. She asked me if I was okay. I was all prepped for a monosyllabic reply. The reptilian, calculating part of me at work. She knows I'm vulnerable. Maybe she's just taking advantage of the situation. Using it to her benefit. Then Laura took my hand and I just dissolved. My body hurts, I'm miserable, and I'm burned out. Tired every way I can be. She squeezed my hand and we both cried. She just kept saying I'm so sorry over and over. It took me a few minutes to compose myself. I wanted Laura to stay so badly, but I knew I shouldn't be having a discussion with the shape I'm in. I thanked her for coming and asked her to leave. Laura was still crying and didn't say anything for a minute. Then she apologized for coming, told me she loved me before she stepped out. I'm laying here and I feel so powerless. All these ducking projects I had in mind to help are useless. I'm confined to this crappy bed with my thoughts. I can't even manage one step forward, two steps back. This sucks. Ducking sucks. No contact, but all I want right now is her fingers ruffling my hair. I don't know how I can do this right now. Update. I managed to get some sleep yesterday morning but I was regularly interrupted by nurses so I didn't get a whole lot. The doctor advised I stay at least another night after the MRI results. On the flip side, I got them to give me something to help me sleep, finally got the four out, and a friend from work grabbed a few things from my apartment. I was going to update last night, but I was just too tired. My buddy brought my work laptop by accident, so games are out of the question. I should be getting out of here by noon though. Laura's sister called and asked if I wanted any food brought by, but I have an idea who'd be making it so I had to decline. 
I need to wait two to three weeks before I can engage in any heavy physical activity, so my gym plan is on hold. But thank you all for the assistance and advice you've given me over the last several days. I felt really pitiful laying in this bed, much less so after I read all the good things most you folks had to say. I really appreciate the movie and book recommendations, despite the limits my doctor put on me, I'll still have things to do for a while. This has honestly been the worst week of my life. And I don't think I could have made it through nearly as intact without you. Really, thanks again for all the love and support. Update. Thanks to everyone who gave me advice and suggestions. I was limited in what I could do by my hospital stay and injury, but despite that I had a great to-do list of books, movies, and other projects. It really helped make my life less unbearable. I haven't spoken with my ex since she visited me in the hospital. I get updates on what she's doing from her sister very occasionally, and I can't help but read them. Whether I trust them or not, I don't know if hearing that she isn't seeing or sleeping with anyone makes me feel better or worse. Getting back on the job helped a lot part of it was the work. Looking over hundreds of design drawings for something like a backup power plant coolant system is time-consuming, but absorbs stray thoughts pretty well. My coworkers were an even bigger help. It's not as though I ever felt left out or excluded before. After word of what happened got around though, I got invited to little things every weekend. BBQs, movie nights, trips to the arcade, I was really overwhelmed by it all. What I really didn't expect was the influx of attention from women. It wasn't all at once, but a few weeks after I got out of the hospital I started to get girls from work asking me out on lunch dates and such. A few of the guys at work have also been trying to set me up with dates. I felt like crap about myself after what happened, and it propped up my confidence a lot to be wanted like that. It's been years since I dated though, so it was both flattering and disconcerting at the same time. I've only gone on a few dates so far, partly because I couldn't see myself being with someone who wasn't at least a little brainy. I went out a few times now with one girl a few years older than I. I was pretty much dazzled after she started quoting Star Trek, TNG. We went on a movie date to see Guardians of the Galaxy and had a really good time. But for all the good things that are going on right now, I've still been having to work to get through every day. When I'm not at work I feel aimless and sometimes tired or sick. It's a struggle just to focus at times. Every date I've been on turns into an internal exercise in how much I can compare the date to my ex. Sometimes it seems like everything is on half-mute. And it feels like the best part of my day is when I go to bed. For all the progress I've made, I still feel miserable. It doesn't help that part of my brain is always whispering how easy it would be to get back with my ex and start over. I don't know what else to do. Final update. To review, it's been over six months since I discovered my girlfriend's infidelity. I stopped seeing her shortly following that and aside from a brief visit while I was in the hospital, I haven't seen her since. I'd say that physically at least, I'm back to firing on all cylinders. I was never really out of shape before, but based on the advice of a lot of people here, I took the opportunity to change my diet and exercise habits for the better. I've made some really nice gains to that effect and, in most respects, i found I have a lot more energy than before. The only downside is that the cold weather affects me more now. I've been on nearly a dozen dates in the past several months. They've all gone well, but it's like I have some internal tick preventing me from taking them seriously. I can't seem to muster the motivation to seriously pursue any romantic relationship. My Zex drive has been near nil as well, despite the opportunities I've had. But besides that, things generally seem to be improving. In the last few weeks I received a raise, saw some really great live stand-up, and finished paying my student loans off completely, although they'd been calling me for alum donations for over a year, the turds. I'll be spending a week or so at my parents' house over Christmas, or at least until I get tired of their force-feeding me. Aside from just doing what I'm doing, I don't know if there's much else I can do. It's not as though things aren't going well for me. I guess I just need to find the right frame of mind. In any case, I'd really like to thank everyone here who's ever given me a kind message or word of advice. We have reached the end of the story. Let's listen to some of the comments by our Reddit listeners. 
Comment 1. OP, you are going to be okay. Be thankful that you weren't seriously hurt in the accident. Of course you still have feelings for your ex. I wouldn't blame you. None of this is your fault. The accident isn't your fault. The cheating isn't your fault. You are having a really crappy May. The good news is it's almost over. Rest up. How long are you in the hospital? Comment 2. She was busted. And she desperately wanted to get back together with OP. It's clear that she just wanted to duck pretty boy because he looked at her and he was yummy and that she really thought she could get away with it. But I'm pretty sure she genuinely loved OP. She thought that the only route to the reconciliation she was desperate for was full disclosure and a sincere apology. I won't fault her for that. Thank <laughs> you.